Hi, uh, this is Sergio Fand, Berlinale uh, programmer. Today I'm very happy to be speaking with Christos uh, uh, Pasalis and Silas Zumerkers, co-directors of uh, this year's official Berlinale selection, The City and the City. Uh, welcome, Silas, and welcome, uh, Christos. Hello. So uh, let's start by telling uh, which city is the city and, uh, and also about your uh, relation to this place, a relation which I understand is uh, very deep and emotional, but also quite conflictual, maybe. Yes, uh, well, uh, the city is uh, the city and the city refers to Thessaloniki, which is uh, the second, let's say, largest city of Greece in the, the northern part. And uh, the connection that we have is uh, that we were both uh, born there in 1978. Uh, both me and Christos, we were, uh, it's our birth town, let's say. Uh, we uh, grew up uh, there up to a certain age and uh, met uh, later in Athens, uh, much later. So uh, the idea uh, for us is uh, when we decided to, we had the idea for this film and we started working together, it, it was for us also a, a sort of homecoming to a return to our uh, birth town. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, from in a totally different age and a totally different uh, mindset, let's say. Yeah, and like with, uh, I mean, everybody has a certain complex set of feelings with their hometown, I guess. So I guess that's true for us as well. I mean, it's a city we hate to love and we love to hate, you know how it is. So we came back with, I would say, a certain maturity uh, compared to our teenage rage against this city. But still with some, as I said before, like a, a complexity of feelings towards this town that we, yeah, that we were born in and raised, yeah. Also, it's a city we both abandoned. Eh? Yeah, true. And uh, uh, this city we see uh, in the film, we see, we see the city nowadays, but we also go back in history. And we go back in history um, starting from the 30s and retelling the story of uh, anti-Semitism, repression and extermination uh, experienced by the Jews community in the city of Thessaloniki. How forgotten, uh, both in Greece and abroad, you felt that this story was uh, and how much and why it was relevant for you to bring it back with this film? Uh, well, the the thing is that this is a this is a story that the the history, let's say, of the the story of the Jewish community of Thessaloniki. What happened to this? Uh, it used to be the largest community of the city in the beginning of the century. Uh, it's a it's a very bitter and very how to say harsh story. Not only on on terms of what happened. Uh, to this community, but also in the sense of how many things were hidden afterwards and how they were treated in the, let's say, in the, the post-war era. Uh, for us growing up in, uh, in Thessaloniki, this was kind of a, how do you say, a, a non, a, a taboo uh, sort of subject. This was something that was not discussed in the 80s and the 90s uh, openly. Uh, it was, uh, so it was really strange for us to realize growing up uh, and later on that we came from uh, a town where uh, where all these things ha have happened and this it was not part in in a sense of neither the the consciousness of the city uh, actually there was a lot of how to say uh, pushback to keep it hidden uh, what happened there but also that it was not a part of the universal consciousness when it comes to to the to world war ii and what happened to uh, and what happened uh, so 
Uh, this for us was, uh, how to say, um, uh, a starting point to uh, retell uh, the history, not only of the Jewish community uh, of Thessaloniki in six chapters, but also the history of this town as it evolved uh, afterwards. And uh, we are sort of, uh, we were born in, as I told you, 1978. So we are, we were born in this, uh, right in the center of, uh, of an era post the dictatorship and everything when, when everything was still covered pretty much. And uh, this is not your first collaboration. Uh, Christos, you're also an actor and you have played in uh, Silla's film before, but it's your, the first film you co-directed. And the film itself is very eclectic. We hear different languages. Uh, we see different styles. Uh, the film moves from color to black and white. Uh, uh, I was wondering uh, if you, with your different sensibilities, uh, you uh, focused particularly in different parts of the film and how you split in case uh, your, uh, your work on the film or otherwise if this diversity in the film was a result of a very organic uh, work that you did together. Uh, to answer to your first question, yeah, I mean, we've been working with Silla since 2008, if I'm not mistaken, where I, I participated in his film Homeland. And later on, we worked in theater where he was, uh, he participated as an actor in a performance I co-directed with some, uh, uh, with a Blitz Theater group, a group I, a theater group I've had. And since then, we've been working together, basically in his films. Yes, it's, it's the first thing we co-directed and co-written. To answer to your second question, for me personally, Silas might be more clear on that. Uh, it's a bit difficult to, to, to describe the method exactly. I remember having the idea, it was in, uh, during Thessaloniki Film Festival some years ago, we wanted to do something about this city, this, this city we were born in. Um, later on, we started writing with not so much uh, communication on what we were writing. We knew the subject, we read a lot of books because hopefully there are many books right now that talk about this issue, the, the Jewish issue in Thessaloniki, the, the Thessaloniki Jews and their mass extinction. And I guess that the, the result that you will see on screen is just the result of contradictory and various forces that just that were pushed in the in, in, in the final result I would say for me it's just the result uh, like the result of forces that had to do with our like you said sensibility or our uh, rage or our uh, grief or our complaints I, I, I would say that is an a thing that just came up in the editing room, if I may say so, in came a way. Together in a way there, yes. Silas, you want yeah, to... It's, it's, no, I just want to say that it's uh, the only, the other force that I would add to, to what Christo says is the force of the dialogue uh, that, uh, that kind of happened between us uh, during the whole process, not, not only in the writing, uh, but also in the filming, uh, in the editing room above all. And uh, so this is also the, the this how to say there are also uh, contradictory sensibilities inside this film that are in a, in that are in a dialogue, and and this was an um, uh, an amazing process uh, for us uh, because it began with a very how to say a, a very strong center a heart center that was uh, that was that we shared in a, in a way and then everything else was very free. And very, had say, in a, in dialogue. I'm, I'm. It's one of the best processes I ever had in a film. Pretty and much. I would also like to add that this film was shot in 14 days, more or less, but throughout a year or so, if I'm not mistaken. I mean, we had the first part of shootings, like a week in Thessaloniki, and the second part, a, a weeks again shooting in uh, Athens or around Athens. So somehow this strange process. You know, we had a, a first part of the shootings, a, a, a first material, and then in a way, throughout the time, it was also, it was forming again, in a way. There were, it was not a concrete idea from beginning to end. We shot this first part, we saw the material, we were aware where we were, and then th through the months that were uh, flowing by before the second part of the shooting, 
new things emerged in a way. We somehow understood the film while shooting it because we had this, this pause of some months between the two parts of the shooting. That was also for me very strange and very, very peculiar. It, it was formed throughout the time and that was really, uh, I don't know how to put it, very, very strange as a process. It's, it's, it's the first time I participated in something like that, I have to say, yeah. Let's talk about the, the history and the chronology of the film. Uh, you started focusing on the 30s, it's where this story, this narration starts. Most of the film is focusing on events that happened through the 50s, but there are also gaps uh, and, and, and lapses in this, in this uh, uh, progression. And then uh, we skip forward, there is a very specific year that has a role in the, towards the end of the film, which is 1983. But then there is also uh, nowadays, because uh, you have shot uh, the city uh, nowadays uh, using this um, uh, process of restaging historical events in the contemporary space. Can you tell us a little about this idea and, this, uh, and why certain moments, why 83 and uh, the concept, the chronological concept of the film? Well, the, <clears throat> this was from the very beginning, this was our core idea, the, uh, the, let's say that the, this act of exhuming and this act of uh, homecoming for us, because this is what the film is, uh, for, for both of us, it would be set in a sort of a dream space that we both shared. Uh, and it's, uh, and in this dream space, it, it would, it would, this dream space would evolve in uh, six chapters uh, in set in different uh, times. But uh, the current of the everyday uh, would be cons constant on the film of the everyday, let's say the modern era, every day. So this, uh, this creates, a, how to say, to a, a center of, of core dialogue in the film uh, that, that, uh, that kind of, how to say, uh, is, is throughout in a way. It's from, from the beginning to its end, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's core. 1983 is a year of, uh, let's say, that we both uh, kind of focused on as, a, a, a sign of our childhood, uh, because 1983 is the first memories uh, for the two of us uh, from, uh, let's say, the Thessaloniki uh, low middle class environment. Uh, then <clears throat> uh, the film, uh, as you said, it, it uh, starts from the 1930s when still the, the Jewish community was uh, uh, was still very very large, and uh, it started having uh, the first and the first aggressions against it started happening. Um, so we, we start by we start we, we use this as a starting point, and also it's a it's a moment in history where Thessaloniki is still a multicultural uh, uh, town. Uh, it's still the heritage of the Ottoman years uh, of the Ottoman let's say uh, centuries are still uh, you can see it, you can grasp it, you can smell it in the city. You, you, uh, from what we found in, uh, in our research. And then uh, how uh, World War II, uh, or then World War II arrives, uh, and then we move on to the following chapters, which is actually the aftermath of the war. Uh, so that's it, pretty much. I don't wanna yeah. say more, because it's before the film. Yeah. Yeah, the chronological order, in a way it was imposed on us because there are key moments, key years, mm -hmm in yeah. this tragic history. You cannot deny them and you cannot escape them. So in a way it was imposed from history itself, uh, history with capital H. Um, and the, the, the part of this, the, the part of, of this modern current, of this contemporary current for us, it was, that was the core idea in a way that to imply that in this modern city of 2020, there are still I wouldn't say ghosts, I don't know how to put it. There are some bodies and some souls that are wandering in this, in this landscape still there because yeah, somehow one needs to remember them and to, to, to acknowledge them because in this city, this has not happened yet. There are some very cowardice steps towards that, but it's not yet um, uh, acknowledged at all, at all. And maybe the ghosts are the contemporary people. I don't know. We will see yeah, the film. yeah, maybe. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Christos. Uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Silas, uh, for your time and for showing your film at Berlinale. Of course. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you very much. Bye bye.